My name is Raymond Jones. I've solved 600 leak code problems. I'm gonna go over how, I'm gonna go over three reasons you can't do leak code. Okay, well, so number one, you think you're bad when you solve problems, right? So when I, when I was like started solving problems, maybe around like day 20, I noticed like something really weird. And even now I'll still notice it, which is I'll have thoughts like, oh, I really suck at this. Oh, I should give up. Um, I generally like, you know, lost around the problem. I have absolutely no idea how to approach the problem. And uh, I realized that, okay, this is how most people feel when, they, when they're when they actually starving problems, especially when they're at the start. And this is actually a huge, huge, huge detriment because the people who are the best at Leco don't actually have this thought. And if they do have it, it's not very often, right? Like imagine you have two people and then one person is thinking like, okay, I suck at this. Um, I should give up. Leak code is really stupid. Like, imagine that these are the thoughts that goes into their head. And it's like, okay, well, obviously they're not gonna do it anymore, right? Because as they're solving problems, they're trying to like solve like a really hard problem. And at the same time, they're also thinking about how much they suck. And like, there's there's no way that's actually gonna be sustainable. Which maybe it is if you have like a really strong willpower or something. So, but th when you look at someone who's like good at leak code and you ask them like, oh, so like, how'd you think about this? what did you think about like doing these problems? They're gonna say like, oh, well, this is like extremely fun. It was really, really interesting seeing this problem. Um, I really, I'm, I wonder like if there's any other way that I could solve this, right? Like the amount of like just, just what do you call it? Friction. The amount of friction that just isn't, that does not exist there is like just night and day. And it becomes like just insane. It becomes so much easier to do lead code when you don't have like any of those negative thoughts that are like actually bubbling up, which is why I say that like part of lead code and being motivated and doing this kind of stuff is staying, staying on top of that it really sucks about like the layoffs and like the tech stuff. And I think I talked to like another, I think I talked to another lead coder. Um, he's actually infinitely better. He's like top 0 0.14%, 1-3% on the website. Like he's insane. Like he can look at a problem and solve it in like five minutes and or 10 minutes or whatever. Like, like that could be like, he can solve like any of the hardest problems on lead code basically almost. But um, he was saying that like he tutored people like when layoffs happen. And for him, he noticed that like the people who would perform the worst were, were like people who were like really stuck in their head like from layoffs like they've either just got laid off and like they're just not able to learn any concepts or lead code and so they're not even able to like progress but i imagine it's like really really similar or like the ai you know computer science grad students or whatever like ai is gonna like take my place like what's the point of even doing this major and like but like you take two people right one person never has to even think about those no person has that thought in their head and the person who does have that thought right like it's just not even fair like the person one person is just going to perform worse um but i don't think a lot of people realize that but anyways yeah so one thing i am cognizant of is like are these thoughts are you know as they're coming up um and while that doesn't really help it is like kind of like you know lower like i guess the impact of it and but to be fair too i'm probably just lucky because these things aren't affecting me. Like I just don't have those thoughts that often when I'm solving a leak code problem. So, okay, so like, then what is like the solution to this? Like, how do you stop your mind from basically just like sabotaging you? Like, how do you stop your mind from telling you like, oh, you suck, you should not be ever doing leak code, you should never be programming, right? The the solutions that I would say are <laughs> one therapy, right? Actually, unironically, I actually think therapy would probably help, but I realized too that's probably like. Probably most people aren't going to do that either. So therapy, either you spend a lot of time with it and just gain like life experience or three meditation. So um, I don't know if you, I, I guess, yeah, anyways, there's, there's a lot of like therapeutic methods. So there's like cognitive behavioral therapy where like you're like try like training yourself at first to just listen and be able to recognize, oh, my brain, my mind is doing this thing, right? You, you go from like level one, which is okay, hey, my mind is doing this thing. My mind is telling me that I suck at this thing, but actually I, I'm not that bad at it, right? So you, you kind of like diffuse it because, you know, you you add an extra distance between the thought um, and actually like entering your brain versus just like, I suck at this and I do suck at this. Um, you, one noticing it and you're getting like a little bit more distance and a little bit more space between the actual thought and like what is reality, right? You don't become like whatever your thoughts are, which is, I guess it's a very difficult thing to do um, which is, and it's a kind of a form of mindfulness, meditation, whatever you want to call it, but it's just like noticing your thoughts. Um, and then the second thing is cognitive behavioral therapy, which is, I think effectively very similar, um, where you're like working with somebody and then they're just saying like, oh, hey, like that thing you just said doesn't really make any sense. you like, let's talk about that. And you break that down. Um, and there's like psychoanalysis too, where like you talk about like your childhood, right? If your parents told you that you really suck um, or that you suck at this thing or you suck at this thing, Right, that kind of gets ingrained into your psyche to where like if you're you know if your parent says like oh you can't do sports and you were told that in your entire life 
you kind of ingrain it in a memory. Um, and anytime somebody tells you to do sports, you remember, oh shoot, my parents told me that I suck at sports, and so like I must suck at sports, right? This is, I mean, this is something very common that'll happen to people. Um, happens a lot too, I imagine, with the Asian culture, where if you're Asian. People, your parents will tell you, oh, you need to work hard, you need to work hard, you need to get an A, you need to get an A, you need to get an A. And now for the rest of your life, or you're an adult now, not necessarily for the rest of your life, it doesn't have to be that way, but if you're an adult now and now you're thinking, oh, if I don't get an A, I am a failure and I'm bad, right? Like these are where you can have like all these same like biases and things like that. And that's just gonna like directly affect you. Um, from what I can tell, at least like most people, at least most of my friends, when they say they hate lead code, it seems to be that Right, like the, the question that they'll say is, I hate lead code because it's not anything like I'm gonna be doing on the job or something. It feels really weird to me because in the same like vein, like it seems like that they're able to like learn and study other things that like aren't necessarily gonna help them on the job. But number two, you don't realize how important algorithm knowledge is, right? I think, yeah, I think most people think that like algorithms are just like some stupid thing, like it's not really gonna help you at all. And just from solving like the leak of problems, it can make a pretty big difference being able to code things like pretty fast and just like using like basic like array knowledge. That's one thing I like about Primogen is that he says that like, oh yeah, like like if you just know like just the bait, like you don't have to learn like crazy DP stuff, but just know how to like manipulate arrays, know how to manipulate trees, graphs, like these are dashers that are kind of come up like in a lot of like real life applications. And not spending, you know, like three hours or like two days, like thinking about like some solution that's not that bad, right? It can go a long way. Um, second thing, like just like the practicality of it is just that like lead code is a part of how programming is assessed. So you open a lot of doors by doing lead code. Um, you can switch careers or switch, you know, jobs effectively a lot more easier when you don't have to like actually study and spend like three months studying for something or something. Right, you can just like leave um, when you do have those skills, or that you know at least that you can gain those skills, and just knowing like, hey, like if I just I'm just like one like one hour DSA phone call, right, like and they can pass it. So this brings me to like an idea that I think about, or at least used to think about when I was like starting. Not too much anymore though, but is the idea of leap code debt, right? Which is the idea that if you do leap code, you can probably get a career that's worth like two hundred thousand dollars a year, uh, maybe not in this market, but. But you can get like some Amazon interview, TikTok interview, whatever, Google, Facebook, and you'll actually confidently pass it um, if you have like the skills, but it's all based off like, okay, well, how much are you gonna willing to invest? So I would guess that like every single lead code, I would actually attach a value to a lead code problem and say that like, if you learn this problem, you can actually um, get some kind of like value input or value output out of it, which is probably crazy and I like it. So I would probably attach like every single legal problem you solve. If a legal problem can give you a two hundred thousand dollar a year job, it's each problem is probably going to be worth about like a thousand dollars because you only, you don't need to solve you know that many problems, right? Okay, number three, lead code, lead code isn't for you. So and decision of whether if at some point you do want to switch careers or switch you want to switch roles, switch jobs. Uh, you're gonna have to make a decision of okay well do you want to spend like the three months three to four months you know solving these problems or do you just want to give up focus on things enjoy your life so nothing you know i wouldn't i wouldn't say that you know that's not necessarily bad and it doesn't really matter you can do whatever you want but those are three reasons you can't do lead code